Temperature in the mid-60s as America's Fight Night comes to the open-aired Home Depot Center, a multi-purpose sports complex and future home to soccer star David Beckham. We're 13 miles south of downtown Los Angeles here in Carson, California, as we brace for what many in the boxing community are calling a dream matchup. It's Fight Night in Southern California. In our main event, a compelling showdown between fellow Mexicans. Yes, expectations are high for fireworks as hard-hitting ring warriors Israel Vasquez and Rafael Marquez will square off for the WBC Super Bantamweight title. Hello again, everybody. Steve Albert from Carson, California. It's not hype or exaggeration to state that for hardcore boxing fans, Israel Vasquez, Rafael Marquez is the most anticipated matchup so far this year. It's not often that super bantamweights create this much of a buzz, but in this case, the anticipation is easy to understand. Both these fighters are the best in their respective divisions. Vasquez at super bantamweight and Marquez at bantamweight, and both are huge punchers. This is as close to a can't-miss fight as can be made. And with that, let me bring on my ringside partner, Al Burst. And Al, your thoughts on why tonight's marquee matchup merits such praise and attention? Well, obviously, we have two very talented fighters fighters who happen to be in their prime and you know we think of the featherweight division as kind of the gold standard among the smaller fighters but it's good to remember that the stars of that division Barrera Morales Pacquiao all were champions in the super bantamweight division before they moved up and of course you got to announce the great duo of fights in the late 90s between Paulie Ayala uh, and Johnny Tapia those were fantastic I think of this fight as kind of carrying on that tradition really all right also a matchup with intriguing fight of the year potential which puts a lot of pressure on it Will it live up to expectations? We'll see. Earlier tonight, Jim Gray spoke with the champion, Israel Vazquez, in his dressing room. Steve Felix de Jesus also joins me to translate. Israel, you said in the paper that you really didn't want to fight Marquez, but you have to. What did you mean by that? Oh, bueno, por el hecho de ser mexicanos, y bueno, pues es uno de los rivales más productivos que, que he tenido en lo largo de mi carrera y sin embargo pues tengo que pelear con él. Well, due to the fact that he's Mexican, I really didn't want to fight him and as we all know, Marquez is a great fighter. You got up the canvas twice in your last fight against Gonzalez, came back to win that fight in the 10th round. What has that done for your confidence and what has that told you about yourself and the ability to come back? Frente a González, estaba en la loma dos veces, te paraste y viniste en el décimo y le ganaste. ¿Cómo te hace eso sentir? O sea, ¿cómo tuvo la confianza después de eso? Pues eh, demuestro que soy un buen guerrero, un gran peleador. Este, espero que en esta ocasión no me tiren, pero, pero voy a demostrar el mismo corazón que mostré con González. I demonstrated against González that I'm a warrior and I expect to do the same tonight. Do you believe that you have an advantage since this is your natural rate? You're 122, he's moving up tonight. Is there an advantage in it for you? ¿Tú piensas que hay una ventaja ya que está subiendo, él está subiendo de peso y este es tu peso natural? 
Eh, aparentemente sí, porque él es un peleador este grande que viene de un peso más pequeño, pero igual tomo la, el compromiso con mucho respeto. Él es un gran peleador, una gran pegada y sobre todo que, que es un muy peligroso. It looks like that, that uh, because he has to go up, that I have the advantage, but uh, we all know that he can, uh, uh, has a hard punch and anything could happen, so I need to be prepared. You're predicting a seventh round knockout? Sí, todavía. <laughs> he says that he is predicting a seventh round knockout. <laughs> what will this do for your career should you win? ¿Qué va a hacer esto para tu carrera si gana? Bueno, pues eh, se abrirían muchas puertas, eh, se abriría el gran mercado internacional, eh, pelear con grandes peleadores, que es lo que yo creo que todo el mundo en el boxeo quiere. I think this will open a couple of doors for me, especially internationally, against some of the great fighters. Felix, Israel, thank you very much. Good luck tonight. Thank you very much. All right, back out to you, Steve. The very personable Israel Vasquez, who came off the canvas twice to stop Johnny Gonzalez in his last fight as he discussed just uh, there with Jim Gray. That'll tell you something about the champion. It really does. You know, you can put a check mark next to Israel Vasquez's name in uh, several categories. Courage, power, skill. Well, add resiliency. Very difficult to keep him on the canvas. He's been there before, but he gets up, and when he gets up, he gets up with renewed vigor. All right, Al, and then there's Rafael Marquez, who immediately tackles one of boxing's elite in his super bantamweight debut. Karen Bryant visited with the challenger earlier this evening. Thank you, Steve. I'm also joined by Felix de Jesus. Now, Rafael, I want to know, do you see this as a career-defining fight tonight? ¿Tú mira como esta pelea que va a definir tu carrera, que va a cambiar tu carrera? Claro que sí, es una pelea muy importante y bueno, hay que, hay que dar un buen espectáculo a toda la gente, ¿no? Of course, we have to give a good uh, spectacle today out there and uh, of course it's going to be an important fight. So you do feel the pressure of the spectacle because prognosticators have been saying that this is going to be the fight of the year. Does that pressure affect you? Tiene presión de que muchos dicen que esta va a ser la pelea del año. Bueno, este, venimos bien preparados físicamente, mentalmente. Venimos a hacer una gran pelea para toda la gente angelina que, que nos ve y toda la gente de Estados Unidos, ¿no? Por short time. We're coming mentally and physically prepared for this fight and we want to give a great show for the people out there. And you told me yesterday that you're ready to leave everything out there on the floor. Do you want to make any predictions when you might end this fight in which round or just going to leave it out there and go all 12? Dijiste que iba a darle todo en esta pelea. ¿Hay algunas predicciones para hoy? Bueno, el knockout llega, el knockout va a llegar y bueno, venimos, como te lo puedo comentar, bien preparados para, para los 12 rounds, ¿no? Si, se, si, se, si llega a los 12 rounds, si no, desde antes. He's well prepared for a knockout. If it comes to the 12 rounds, he's always ready to fight if it goes 12 rounds today. Now, this is a first fight for you at a new weight class. What was the reasoning behind going up in weight? Subiste ahora de peso. ¿Por qué subiste? Bueno, porque también ya este, ya me sacrificaba, me, me sacrificaba un poco en las 108 libras y, y bueno, para qué dar ventajas y bueno, subí a las 122 libras. I was sacrificing too much at 108, so I needed to go at 122. He was ready for that. Okay. Well, we're ready to see you. We're hoping for a good fight. Espero que ver un gran pelea. Pretty good. Not bad. <laughs> bien, bien. Primero Dios y bueno. Un un saludo a toda la gente angelina que va a ver un gran espectáculo eh, esta, esta noche. First of all, God, and then second of all, to the fans, that they're going to see a good fight. All right. Well, thank you very much. Good luck to you. Thanks. Well, Al, on paper, this fight appears to be too close to call. There's just no clear-cut favorite. There really isn't. They are both so good. They are both in their prime, and that's absolutely true. And, you know, not only are these two men courageous and powerful in the ring, they're also both highly skilled technicians, and they're almost mere images of each other. In fact, for the first time in my 26 years as a boxing commentator, tonight I've arrived at identical keys to victory for each fighter. Marquez wants to use the jab in this fight, but he can be countered off a lazy jab with the right hand. Marquez works both hands to the body, and he can make an impact tonight with that attack. He has a lightning quick left hook, and he can land it in a unique way, following a jab. He surprised Silence Mabuza with that combination early in their first fight. It helped turn this match, and it could easily do the same thing against Vasquez. Well, these keys should certainly sound familiar. If a Vasquez jab lingers out there, Marquez will counter with the right hand as well. Vasquez, a terrific body puncher who can turn fights with this attack. And if he scores a knockout tonight, I believe it will start with the left hook. Well, he's the slight betting favorite. 
friendly but very focused and serious Rafael Marquez who brings a gladiator mentality after training in the solitude and 10 mile high altitude of the Mexican mountains. He hears it from the crowd while he was in the mountains staying at a rustic cabin with no electricity no running water the well-schooled vicious punching Marquez not unlike Vasquez said he was willing to give his life for this fight which undeniably reflects the intense passion and pride you know, one of the questions we had was who would the, the fans here be more interested in and give their support to because both Vasquez and Marquez Mexican fighters large Mexican community here certainly so far Marquez getting a very warm response from this crowd over seven years since he's tasted defeat 15 straight wins 8 and 0 oh in title fights but none bigger than this one yeah it's his time to shine in and here's the affable, soft-spoken, two-time world champion, Israel Vasquez, the man at Super Bantamweight, came to the U.S. in 98, lives in the L.A. suburb of Huntington Park, but he is clearly getting a bigger ovation from the crowd than Marquez did. A guy who used to live in a funeral home in Mexico City where his father still works. Hasn't lost in five years. He's won nine in a row including that fight of the year candidate with Johnny Gonzalez, which personified his guts and determination. Now, as he makes his way uh, up the steps into the ring, Al, after much speculation and controversy, trainer extraordinaire Freddie Roach is with him tonight. After the fight, he'll get back with Oscar De La Hoya in preparation for that uh, mega fight with Floyd Mayweather. How significant is that? Well, they're very happy to have him here. There was some doubt about it, but uh, also a part of the story is that Roach hasn't been with him for about a 10 or 12 day period while he was with De La Hoya on the big press junket. So let's see if that has some impact on how well he can execute what Roach has taught him. There's Freddie uh, just behind him in the in the glasses. Vasquez feels that Marquez will simply not be able to take his punch. He predicted a KO in seven. Marquez's response. How do you know it'll go seven <laughs> a fight many feel had to happen. Two of the elite in the lower weight classes both on scorching hot streaks. And uh, let's size them up. We go to the tail of the tape. Vasquez almost three years younger as Marquez turns 32 later this month. And while Vasquez is the true 122 pounder, it's Marquez with the slight one inch height advantage plus the inch and a half edge in reach. And at yesterday's weigh in, both just under the 122 pound weight limit. And the key unified rules for this world title fight. There's no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt causes a fight to end within four rounds, it's a no decision. After four rounds, they go to the scorecards. And if a punch causes a cut and the injured fighter can't continue, he loses by TKO. So here at the Home Depot Center in Carson, California, getting ready for our main event, Israel Vasquez versus Rafael Marquez for the WBC Super Bantamweight Championship. Let's get the official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Home Depot Center here in Carson, California for the much anticipated featured bout of the evening brought to you by Gary Shaw Productions, Saquon Ringside Promotions, and Golden Boy Promotions in association with Rockstar Energy Drink, AEG, and Showtime. Well, fans, this bout is sanctioned by the WBC. Resident Jose Suleiman supervisors are Lee Peters and Rudy Tejas. Along with the California State Athletic Commission, the executive officer is Armando Garcia. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Paul Wallace, Dr. Perlman Hicks, and Dr. Blair Cranson. Timekeepers at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, John Lichty and Mike Millsap. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Dave Moretti. From Valencia, California, Jack Reese. And from La Mesa, California, Patrick Russell. 
And at this time, we present our third man to the ring, the referee in charge from West Covina, California, Raul Kais Jr. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Bantamweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the Home Depot Center, it's showtime! Challenger on my left, batting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with white trim, hailing from Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico. He weighed in at 121 and one half pounds, with a record of 36 wins and three losses. He has 32 big wins coming by way of knockout tonight. He moves up in weight and challenges for the title. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the IBF and IBO Bantamweight Champion of the World, introducing Rafael. His opponent across the ring on my right, the defending world champion, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trunks with silver trim, fighting out of Los Angeles, California, by way of Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico. He weighed in at a ready 121 and three quarter pounds. His record stands at 41 wins, three losses, 31 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight he is making the sixth defense of his title. Here is the WBC Super Bantamweight Champion of the World introducing his Charge Raul Kais Jr. now to give instructions. Chief second only, please. Protector. Protector. Protector, por favor. Okay, ya les di las instrucciones abajo. Quiero una pelea limpia. Okay, toca aguante buenos setos los dos. Aquí para arriba. Aquí para arriba es legal, okay? Que vean los dos. Okay, buenas setos los dos. Well, both fighters proclaim they will not waste time. They'll start throwing from the bell. It'll grow even more intense each round. Here we go. Marquez in the black, Vasquez in the blue. The champion Israel Vasquez, who can change a fight with one punch, said he'll look to get inside and apply pressure. You don't want to get too close to uh, Vasquez. Marquez has dramatically improved his boxing IQ and combines skill with extraordinary power in both hands a very accurate combination puncher in this early going several things to look for Marquez wants to just have the slightest of movement to make sure he's not standing right in front of Vasquez and Vasquez wants to jab his way in when he's going to attack so we'll see if both men are doing that we'll look to see if Marquez can absorb Vasquez's punching power his punches be just as strong at super bantam weight as they were at bantam. Interestingly, Vasquez said Marquez fades as the fight goes on, as the fight progresses, but I'm not so sure about that. Well, we'll see. You know, there may be lapses, and we'll get into that a little later for Marquez, but the, these, these early rounds, really important for Marquez. He wants to get on the scorecard and take advantage of the fact that maybe he will start a little quicker. We'll see if he can do that. Right now, very even first round, though Vasquez, I think, has been a little sharper. Marquez uh, wants to control the action, much like Johnny Gonzalez did earlier on against uh, Vasquez, until Vasquez solved that puzzle and got inside on the, the long, tall Johnny Gonzalez. These fighters are perfectly matched. <laughs> it's really interesting. Even in this first round, which hasn't produced wild fireworks, but good solid action, you can see they are both matched very well in terms of their styles, and you know it'll be interesting. Recently, uh, Vasquez stopped Gonzalez, Ivan Hernandez. 
There's Marquez with a left hand upstairs. They both traded left hooks there. Someone both the landed. Someone and that's the punch, I'm telling you. If there's a knockout in this fight, I believe it will come from the left hook of one of these two fighters. Vasquez missing with a slashing right. Landed with a, a left hand. Vasquez is trying very hard to get downstairs with that oh, left to the body. Blood already yeah. from the, the nose of Israel Vasquez. And there's a hard left hand to the chest area by Marquez. And a double left hook to the body by Marquez. That was a combination before that, a jab and then a left hand by Marquez, the kind that he can land so effectively. It's finding a home early. Final seconds of round one. Here comes Marquez with a beautiful combination to the head. Now, yes, a left a uppercut to the jaw. It backs up Vasquez. So a fight breaks out right away. And Vasquez in some trouble. A big right hand by Marquez hurt him. It wow. jolted Israel Vasquez. Big round for Marquez. Vasquez has landed and then Marquez's did and Marquez's left I think created the blood around the nose but later on it would be a straight right hand by Marquez after the jab that would stun Israel Vasquez and the early edge in power goes to Marquez Vasquez his knees actually buckling in that scenario round two but you can never count Vasquez out because of his power. Two guys with questionable defenses, which makes this so exciting. Let's see how Vasquez reacts after being rocked towards the end of that first round. So as advertised, they both come out throwing. And Marquez so far with the upper hand. And they're both such good ring technicians, especially offensively. This is like watching a clinic of good boxing. Marquez, uh, more technically polished perhaps than Vasquez. There's that right uppercut just missing by Vasquez. And you know, that's the wild card in this Ooh. fight. Oh, big great. right hand to the jaw by Marquez. The uppercut's the wild card. Both men have a good uppercut. They have to be careful when they throw it to leave, not leave themselves open. And Vasquez is finding out that Marquez does indeed have power in both hands. And remember, in some ways, this fight is going to form. Many people thought Marquez would do better in the early going. The question is, could he win this fight in the early going and not let Vasquez later on come on? Yeah, once again, you can never count a guy like Vasquez out. Anytime you have a puncher like Vasquez, he's always in it. He could be way behind, and he's still in it. Inside uppercut by Marquez. Vasquez blocking that jab. Vasquez trying to settle down and find the openings. Marquez pushes Vasquez back with a double jab. Now Vasquez counters with a triple jab. Another jab got through that time by Vasquez. Right now, a slight edge in hand speed to Rafael Marquez, and he's throwing better combinations, and that's what's making the difference in these first couple of rounds. Vasquez digging in with uppercuts on the inside. Nice, strong jab by Marquez. Now, Vasquez in the inside is throwing that hook to the body. He wants to come with the double left hook, and I think that's part of the way he's setting it up. Heavy right, straight right by Marquez that landed to the jaw. Vasquez tasting a lot of leather here in the first two rounds. The last round and a half, Rafael Marquez has been as good as he could possibly be. He seemed kind of tight, but he's not fighting that way. No, he isn't. 
Vasquez seemed the looser of the two, but he is down. He's behind to this point. The right. You need to keep working the right hand and then the jab. You okay? All right, now a little Vaseline. You got it right and then left. And alive, and alive, Rafa. Nacho Beristain, the famed trainer from Mexico, wants more of this punch. There's an excellent lead right hand by Rafael Marquez. So early he landed the hook, but then that right hand has become a, the weapon du jour for him. And he lands a good, solid right hand to the head of Vasquez. Nacho Beristain, very responsible for transforming Rafael Marquez into an excellent boxer. We already knew he had the power. But now he's able to combine those those two key elements. Yeah. Round three. We thought this fight would turn on who makes either the first mistakes or the most mistakes. And right now for Vasquez, part of the reason he's getting hit with those right hands is one of the keys, his jab's a little lazy and his, le right, his left hand's a little bit low and Marquez is able to get his right hand in. And Marquez's punches, not only dangerous, but they're, they're slashing type punches and, and they often cause or can exacerbate cuts. Just ask Silence Mabuza. Vasquez was in a very good rhythm for the first part of round one, but it hasn't been since then. He's Mar been slowed by yeah. the punching power of, of Rafael Marquez. Now right in there on the inside, Vasquez was able to get the right handed, but hasn't been able to uncoil the left hook when he's in there. He needs that punch even more than Marquez. Marquez with a heavy right, it sent Vasquez back. Oh, did that get Vasquez's attention? Now a left hook to the jaw. Whoa. And down goes Marquez! Vasquez knocks Marquez down! with a minute 14 remaining and sustained non-stop two-way action just when it looked like Marquez was having his way down he went and he's got a minute to go Vasquez, oh Vasquez is now uncalling that left hook and that's what made the difference he was able to get that punch off both these guys have tasted the canvas before both usually come back with renewed vigor they prosper from adversity we'll see how how it affects Marquez Vasquez has not been wild in his attack he has been cautious he knows Marquez is dangerous he doesn't oh. want to let the moment pass a lot he... of folks wouldn't be surprised now if Vasquez went down 20 seconds left in the third round it is as advertised. Most of the fans here at the Home Depot Center standing. As we head for the bell in a breakthrough round for Israel Vasquez. I you're hurting him, but it, nothing happened, nothing happened. You got to keep going when you hit hard, and you got to keep alive because he throws two. Are you okay? Yes. Rafael Marquez got off to a very good start in the third round. Ripping the uppercuts, good combinations by Marquez, and so and even hurt Vasquez there with that right hand. So it looked like Marquez had things well in hand. However, that left hook on the inside changed the round. As we know, and you've pointed out, those left hooks can from Vasquez. 
final instructions from Nacho Beristain, who said, all right, all right, nothing happened. He was trying to just calm Rafael Marquez down as we enter into round four after a very dramatic third round. The interesting thing is if you had asked people to take a bet who would go down in the first five rounds, they would have probably suggested Vasquez. And Vasquez was hurt in this uh, earlier in this fight, but instead it was Marquez. So a lot of back and forth, give and take, just as the two fighters felt it would be. And as we expected, both men committed to giving the fans uh, an all-action fight, and they're living up to that commitment right here. One thing we've not seen as much from yet from these fighters is the body work. They're both great body punchers. And we may start seeing that in the rounds to come. The fans in unison chanting for Marquez. The Marquez jab has been very effective and uh, probably is out jab Vasquez by just a little bit. So Marquez down a minute 28 into round three. A right-left combination, but the left hook did the damage after Marquez was uh, pretty much controlling the action. Marquez drawing blood from Vasquez's nose late in the first round. Oh, these are tough, hard inside body shots by Marquez. It's got Vasquez grimacing. Now, I thought that... The Vasquez left hook was an important weapon in this fight. I thought Marquez's left hook might be his major weapon, but now it appears if he hooks with Vasquez, Marquez is in a little bit more danger than he needs to be, Steve. So I think Nacho Berstein rightfully wants the right hand for Marquez more. Vasquez trying to weaken Marquez with blistering shots to the temple. Vasquez came very close with another one of those left hooks. The jab of Marquez sending Vasquez back. What a close round, round four is. Oh, big swing and a miss. Combination to the head by Marquez. Very accurate, sharp, precision-like punches by Marquez. He's probably scored more clean and hard shots throughout the fight. Although he's the one that tasted the canvas. Here's Vasquez. Again, tasting leather. Marquez Great jab set up the right. Wow, nice combinations. And again, the right hand, the big weapon for Marquez there. Good rallying by Marquez after a tough third round in which he went down. Marquez showing a lot of points. Able to regroup well. Don't let him get off first, okay? All right? On the inside, you gotta let your hands go, okay? All right. Let's go, it, bro. When you're on the inside, you're letting him get off first. I want you to get off first, okay? Okay. Okay. The left hand. You gotta throw the left hand. Just keep him away with the left hand. Keep jabbing. And then the right hand. Left, left, and then the upper, and then the right. Combination. Our translator, Felix De Jesus. Israel Vasquez understands English, but he responds in, in Spanish. Rafael Marquez uh, does not speak English. Neither of these fighters have ever lost a title match. 6-0 for Vasquez, 8-0 for Marquez. Even if there's a draw, that record will change tonight. Oh, nice left-right combination by, by Israel Vasquez. Back comes Rafael Marquez with a combination of his own. Oh, a big right hand up. The combination by Marquez. Tremendous give and take. Nacho Beristain rightfully wanting Marquez to use the jab a lot. That will set up the right hand. And Freddie Roach correct. Vasquez cannot let Marquez get off first all the time in this fight. A lot of people comparing this uh, early on to Castillo Corrales one, and it's starting to take on that special feeling. 
I think the trick for Vasquez in this fight is to get in position inside where he can again keep throwing those hooks. That's his ticket in this fight. He won't outbox Marquez from the outside, just as he couldn't do that against Johnny Gonzalez. Press row scoring, it's close. Marquez by one point right across the board. Carlos. Exactly the way I have it. Carlos uh, Arias, Orange County Register. Steve Kim, MaxBoxing.com. Lance Pugmire from the LA Times. The warning to Israel Vasquez from referee Ryan Cayes Jr. Hitting behind the head. Vasquez pushing Marquez back. Now that was a good right hand from Vasquez. That's not his primary weapon in this fight, but he has a good oh, right hand. Right uppercut, right on the chin by Rafael Marquez. They continue to trade vicious punches. Wow, there's the body work by Vasquez. He's been a little more committed to it in this fight than Marquez has. Oh, good work on the inside. Right hand to the, to the side of the head by, by Vasquez. Explosive, dynamic action. A straight left hand on the, on the neck jaw area by Vasquez. Marquez issues a flurry. Sets up the right with the, the left jab, but the right missed. Back comes Vasquez with a left hook off the top of Marquez's head. We're going to see another big left hook land by Vasquez. I don't know when it's going to come, but it's going to come in the next couple of rounds. Right hand by Marquez with authority. What conviction behind that punch. Great combinations by Marquez. And Vasquez is hurt. Marquez going in for the finish. He wants to close the show. Vasquez all of a sudden in a low. He stopped for a moment for some reason. And Marquez is trying to take advantage of the fellow sounds. I think he was faking it. I think he was trying to lure him in. I don't know. That, that's an interesting situation. He may have gotten thumbed. Okay. Okay. I think he was claiming he got thumbed out. Rafael Marquez, early on in the round, precision combination punching, very effective from the outside. And then Vasquez was able to come back, throwing that good straight right hand, a lead right that got by the defense of Marquez. But the volume of punches clearly Marquez. Now here's where maybe the thumb or something happened. Yeah, apparently there was something that made him not be able to see it. And you see Vasquez realizing, though, I've got to fight back or I will get nailed here. And so he did. So, yeah, it was something that happened with his eye. And Vasquez comes running out of his corner to start round six. Now, that left eye could close a little bit. Whatever happened there, this might have some impact on the vision of Vasquez. Now there's a double left hook by Vasquez. He better get to throwing that weapon in this fight before things get away from him. Now uh, showing a sense of urgency is Israel Vasquez as he really pumps up the volume here in round number six. The jab of Marquez has been so effective. Keeping Vasquez off balance and setting up the power shots. Left uppercut misses by Vasquez. Raul Cayuse Jr., uh, the referee, we understand, uh, saying that uh, Vasquez was thumbed up the nose, which caused uh, Vasquez to, to momentarily stop, and then Marquez jumped on the situation. The Vasquez realized, I got to fight back. He just nailed Vasquez, Marquez on the head. Marquez turns him around. Now, you know, in every Rafael Marquez fight, or most of them against Silence Mabuza and several others, Marquez has had little low periods, Steve, in the somewhere between the third and seventh round and that's what Vasquez was counting on now we haven't seen it yet um, in fact he was able to get to Marquez early but in these rounds Marquez has retained sharpness and I think it's more mental than physical because he's in tip-top condition as he trains in the high altitude of the Mexican mountains it's now, crowd chanting for Marquez. Vasquez has picked things up a bit, though, in this round. Six has been a little better for him. Whether he's winning it remains to be seen, but he's off to a better start anyway in this round. Shaking the effects of the uh, alleged thumbing. 
The Marquez jab has just been excellent. And there he jabbed downstairs. And that helped set up that right hand by Marquez. Non-stop action from the start of this fight. Minute to go in the sixth. It's scheduled for 12 for the WBC Super Bantamweight Championship. Israel Vasquez, the champion of the blue with the silver trim. Rafael Marquez, the, the challenger, and the black with the white trim. Vasquez 41 and 3 with 31 knockouts. Marquez 36 and 3, 32 knockouts, both undefeated in title fights. Marquez pushing Vasquez back with the double jab. Back comes Vasquez now, right hand to the head. On the inside, Vasquez can do better than Marquez for the most part, and he's committed more to the body, body work. And they continue to gun away from close range. There's that jab by Marquez, continues to be effective. Right, Rafael Marquez, very accurate with his combinations. Tough round to score. Both with a very high work rate throughout. Israel. You work that body for me and then back to the head and can work for you, okay? All right? Yeah. All right? Israel, he's tired. The body shots are killing him. Keep on the body. You and know, Nacho Beristain told uh, Marquez, be alive in there. We're going to see an example of what I think he means. Here, Vasquez attacking. Marquez pushes him around but is ready to punch and lands a good lead right hand the moment Vasquez turns around. Instead of not punching, he went right after him, but waited until his head had turned around so he didn't get an illegal punch call. Vasquez attacking. Now the referee's nowhere to be seen, so Marquez says, I'm gonna attack him after I kind of twist him around. Good clever maneuver by Marquez. Although Vasquez denied it, he uh, may have had his nose broken in the Johnny Gonzalez fight, and his nose looks a mess here now. Particularly now, after that uh, alleged thumbing. Freddie Roach made a point to ask Vasquez for a lot of body work. They think maybe that body work will help him as this fight wears on, and it probably will. Oh, oh big left hook by Vasquez. Oh, man, that just... That just took the starch out of Rafael Marquez. Huge shot, a bomb. Boy, and yet Marquez able to sustain Stop. through that. That looked like a, a monster shot, but Marquez still in there battling. That just stopped Marquez in his tracks. And he, he hasn't been the same since. Big left hook there by Israel Vasquez. Let's see if that, that turns it here. Another left hand to the jaw by, by Vasquez. Marquez and Vasquez both very hittable. You see the scores. Each has it by three for That's Marquez. That's exactly how I have you this have fight. 58-55 for Marquez. The volume of punches is much better for Rafael Marquez. There's no question about that. Not that Vasquez is landing his share. It's just that Marquez is landing more. And Vasquez, I don't know, whose punches are harder on the hole. Well, I think Marquez has landed some very big shots. So is Vasquez. But so Mar is Vasquez. You know, so in terms of power, it's tough to tell. Good body work there by Vasquez, but the combination for the outside clearly better for Rafael Marquez. That's why he's ahead on the scoring of the press row people in my score. Well, Vasquez nice coming on, big left hand there. Back comes Marquez. This is, this is great. I mean, both these fighters doing little things, subtle things, uh, throwing punches with power. It's just an excellent boxing match. Left hook blocked by Vasquez. And it's okay to block one. It really is. <laughs> I'd say so. <laughs> Almost no let up in the action. And you know, in round six and seven, Vasquez has really been committed to the body work. We'll see if that will slow Marquez down at all as this fight wears on. These two guys have to be in incredible condition to, to withstand this kind of punishment and to issue these kinds of punches over and over again. Marquez with the left uppercut. Now the left was blocked by Vasquez. Vasquez with a left right combination. Come on. Vasquez turns it up. Back comes Marquez. 
Oh, wow. And they trade going toe to toe in the center of the ring. Israel Vasquez early in the round lands this unbelievable left hook. Marquez, while he, he took that punch really well, that's astonishing. Then Marquez with Vasquez landing the jab and, Mar and landing some good punches behind it. But that Marquez coming back with a couple shots. What's happening? It's over. Israel Vasquez has quit. decides not to go on and you have to go back to perhaps the issue of the nose maybe he just can't breathe i mean we see the blood coming from it we're not going to speculate we'll get information as we go on that but certainly it's conceivable that's the reason out of nowhere al vasquez just strolled over to the marquez corner and waved it off and a jubilant rafael marquez has snatched the title away unbelievable finish the irony is it came after the seventh round, the round in which Vasquez thought he was going to win this fight. We're getting uh, the report now uh, that Vasquez broke his nose. That's that point in time when he turned away. Yep. And uh, he just feels that he can't continue with that uh, situation. Well, it, it put an abrupt end to what over seven rounds was as good a boxing match as you're likely to see. I mean, it was uh, the true boxing definition of a war. And it, it it's a shame it had to end this way. We're going to hear the audio in the corner. Check it out. You're fighting. I can't go. I can't be sure. Yes, I'm sure. I'm going to stop the fight. I can't stop the fight. Yes. Ref, let's stop the fight. Stop the fight? Yeah. Plain and clear, you heard Vasquez say to his trainer, Freddie Roach, I can't do it anymore. And I think he might have suggested he can't breathe. And I think that's picked a big part of the, the reasoning there. So, an abrupt ending to a brilliant fight. Just the crying shame that it had to uh, end in that fashion. Marquez, of course, uh, celebrating the victory, but, um, you know, Israel Vasquez unfortunately had to uh, abruptly end this fight with the, uh, the nose problem. But what a nonstop war up until that point. It was great. We'll go back to round five when we think this situation began, and it's what made uh, Vasquez turn away. Bo, two jabs right to the nose. Yeah, that, those were hard punches, and that is probably where the nose got broken or whatever happened, whatever injury happened to the nose. And then as it kept getting worse over the sixth and seventh round, trouble breathing for Vasquez and a very difficult for him to continue. And now given the kind of warrior that Israel Vasquez yeah. is, you, you, you can't get on him. Of course you can't. He's not a, he's not a no. jive kind of a guy. Absolutely not. So you whatever know. the nature of this injury, it clearly was sufficient to make it hard for him to continue. You gotta believe him. He just could not continue, couldn't breathe through the nose. It's shattered, it's broken. And this man, Rafael Marquez, with a successful move up in weight and grabs another world title, his second. Let's get it up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. with the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout has been stopped at the end of round number seven. A referee in charge, Ro Kais Jr., stops a contest upon suggestion of the corner that Vasquez was unable to continue. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. He is the new WBC Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, Rafael Marquez. So 
Rafael Marquez is the new WBC Super Bantamweight champion, dethroning Israel Vasquez, who reigned since December 05 with two title defenses, suffers his first loss in almost five years, ending a nine-fight win streak. Marquez now 37-3. Meanwhile, Vasquez drops to 41 and 4. Marquez extends his win streak to 16 in a row. He said he wants to stay at 122 pounds for a while, but 126 could be in his future. Let's get it up into the ring right now for post fight reaction and Jim Gray. Jim. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Israel, first, let's start with you. If you can speak to us in English, please try. Why did you stop? Why did you quit the fight? Uh, bueno, pues no podía respirar. Era inútil seguir la pelea porque estaba recibiendo golpes que no debía haber recibido y era lo que me impedía seguir la pelea. Felix de Jesus will interpret. Yeah, he said he couldn't breathe, so there was no sense in keeping with the fight because he just couldn't breathe through the nose. He couldn't breathe. Was your was your nose broken in that fifth round when you abruptly turned away and went to the ropes? No, no fue antes de, de como el segundo tercer round. Yo tenía la nariz un poco lastimada, eh, incluso dejé a mi esquina que pararan la pelea, pero eh, me forzaron a seguir dos rounds más y me vi muy bien. Estaba a punto de, de poderlo noquear, pero desafortunadamente no pude continuar más. Sí, yeah, was at the point where he almost knocked him out, but since the second round, he was having problems with his nose. Did you realize Freddie Roach as his trainer that his nose was broken in the second or third round? Uh, yes, I did. And then two rounds before I stopped the fight, he complained, told me he couldn't breathe. I, said, I asked him to suck it up and go on. And then that last round, I, he told me I can't breathe and I had to stop the fight for his health because uh, he, he, it's hard to fight this tough guy when my guy can't even breathe. Did you believe? Did you believe you were winning the fight at the time that, it, that you stopped? Yes, muy bien parada. I understood that. Yes. Okay. So he, he said that the fight was stopped at the right time. Would you like a rematch? Cuando antes posible, yo pienso que estuvo muy bien. Solo fue la dificultad de respirar. He wants a re rematch as quickly as possible. The only thing was that he had problems with uh, breathing today. Israel, thank you. Tremendous performance tonight. Thank you very much. Rafael, congratulations. Let's bring Felix back on over here so he can interpret for us. Did you realize that Israel's nose was broken in the second or third round? ¿Tú sabías que ya en el segundo o tercer round estaba fracturada la nariz de Israel? Bueno, bueno no sabía. Yo este, vine a hacer mi pelea. Yo vine a tirar golpes y bueno, lo que hice, ¿no? I didn't know. I just came with my fight plan to fighting. I didn't know the nose was broken. Were you surprised that he stopped and didn't continue? ¿Estaba sorprendido cuando se paró la pelea? Eh, sí, estaba sorprendido porque pensaba que iba a seguir. Porque es un gran peleador, un gran peleador que es el único que me ha tirado en la quijada. Y bueno, este, gracias a Dios, salió bien. Yes, I was very surprised. He's the only fighter that has, you know, dropped me. So he's a great fighter. I thought the fight was going to keep going. It, uh, he was surprised him. Did you feel as though you were behind when he quit, or did you think that you were ahead? Cuando él no siguió con la pelea, ¿tú crees que estaba ganando la pelea o perdiéndola? Bueno, estaba. Yo digo que por por un punto dos por la caída y realmente este bueno me sorprendió y y bueno gracias a Dios por la condición que traía pues me levanté a ganar, ¿no? Because of the fall, he thought he was close, maybe one or two points either way. Uh, but, you know, he was physical condition, he's up, and he was kept, kept fighting. Officially, you can tell him he was ahead at the time, as we've gotten the official scorecards as of now. Will you give Israel a rematch? Oficialmente estaba arriba en la pelea cuando pararon la pelea y le daría una revancha a Israel. Claro que sí, lo de la revancha, como ya les había dicho a mi equipo, y bueno, es un gran peleador. Un mejor peleador realmente es un gran peleador que realmente lo único que me ha tirado arriba del ring y, y me merece una revancha. He does deserve a rematch. He's the only person that has dropped me here in the ring and he's a great fighter and uh, yes, he can have the rematch. How difficult was it for you to concentrate and to focus on this fight because of your dad's health and his inability to travel as well as your wife telling you that she's pregnant? Qué difícil era concentrarte para esta pelea sabiendo que tu papá anda mal y que tu esposa está embarazada. Bueno, este, bueno, gracias a Dios mi papá está bien. Nada más este, complicaciones, complicaciones del doctor, pero, pero está bien y, y bueno, este, realmente venimos a hacer una pelea grande y bueno, gracias a Dios mi papá está bien y mi familia está muy bien y se pone muy contento porque gané esta pelea, ¿no? Y todo Thank México, todo Iztapalapa, todo ejército, ¿no? Yeah. All of Mexico is going to be uh, happy because of this fight and his father did have complications but is much better now. So he's uh, feeling great. What would you like to do next? I know you watch your brother fight. 
against Barrera, but what would you like to do next in the ring? Yo sé que tú vas a ver a tu hermano pelear frente a Barrera, pero quieres que quieres hacer otra en el ring próximamente. Bueno, este, bueno, falta Juan Manuel y realmente vamos a ver otro campeón del mundo y y bueno, hay que prepararnos para lo que venga, ¿no? Para lo más fuerte. Well, we're going to keep our options open. We're going to prepare against a, uh, whatever fighters available, Juan Manuel or whoever's available, he will fight him. Stay at 122. Stay at 122. Sí, sí, me quedo hasta hasta barrer la división y bueno, vamos a agarrar los campeones que realmente nos se quedan eh, por poner, ¿no? Yeah, so whoever is champion in the 122, I'm staying there, and uh, whoever comes, uh, we're going to fight him. Bueno, le agradezco también a Romanza, Short Time, Richao, que realmente nos ha llevado por buen camino. Of course, he uh, says congratulations and thank you to Show Time. Well, thank you. Muchas gracias. Congratulations. Muy bueno. Un saludo a todo México y un saludo a todo Iztapalapa Ejército. To all of Mexico, of course, uh, congratulations for this fight. Back to you, Steve. And here's a look at the uh, scoring. The official judges at ringside saw it this way. Dave Moretti had Marquez ahead by two points, 67-65. Jack Reese had it even. And Patrick Russell had Marquez up also, 67 to uh, 65. As far as the... Uh, the people along press row, Carlos Arias had Marquez up 67-65, the same for Steve Kim, and the same for Lance Pugmire. So all three across the board had Marquez up by two points at the time of the stoppage after round number seven. And uh, Al Bernstein, uh, how, did, how did you see it? I mean, it looked like Marquez did have the slight, the slight edge with his, uh, you know, with his polish and box. Yeah, I had the fight 67-65. I think Rafael Marquez was a little more precise. Both fighters fought very, very well. But Rafael Marquez, through more combinations, was a little bit precise. And of course, the knockdown is what made that cl closer than it might otherwise have been. And that's an important point to note uh, because he performed so well. Now, an important moment in this fight clearly came in the uh, third round when Israel Vasquez was able to unload a left hook against Rafael Marquez at a point where it looked like Marquez was just going to take control of these early rounds. Mark Vasquez landed a very, very big left hook, sent Marquez down. That was his best moment clearly in the fight. A, probably the most important moment in this fight, the seminal moment, came in round number five when two strong jabs to the nose of Vasquez sent him back reeling to the ropes. And really, at that moment, it took enormous poise by Vasquez not to go down or uh, at that point let Marquez take total control of the fight. He came back a bit, but clearly he was impaired as this fight went on. And that's why this man, Rafael Marquez, was able to ultimately stop the fight after seven rounds in what, make no mistake, was an extraordinarily well-boxed match. In our main event, yep, it lived up to its billing for as long as it lasted. It was Rafael Marquez prevailing over Israel Vasquez in the highly anticipated showdown that did not disappoint. That'll do it from the Home Depot Center as we close out another edition of Showtime Championship Boxing, America's Fight Night. For Al Bernstein, Jim Gray, Karen Bryant, and our entire crew, Steve Albert saying so long from Carson, California.